We live? We are. Hello, every, hello everybody again. Kenny with Outdoor Home. We'll give uh, just a couple seconds here, let everybody tune in that wants to. <laughs> Warmed up a little bit. It's much better than yesterday. Everybody and thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Outdoor Home Stay at Home Live Cooking Demonstration. Coming to you live from our backyard, Sunday, 1 o'clock. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in and this, if you're just now watching this, you may have to go back and watch. This was a three-part series. We started yesterday at 1 o'clock, uh, so we'll just kind of backtrack on, on what we've done so far. Actually, I'm going to start with, I think we've got ingredients uh, for the port, port shoulder that probably need to come off because it was pretty close when, no, we'll give it just a, I'm going to pull the beans off real quick. And then we'll keep it. It's a little high tip for the beans. I was trying to warm them up, but I don't want to scorch them. So we'll get those off and then we'll talk about those in a few minutes. Can I do shout outs? Sure. Hi, Candy. And hi, Larry from San Diego. Wow. It's not one o'clock in San Diego. <laughs> Uh, today, since what we're doing today is actually not showing a live cooking demonstration, to pull this off on a 20-hour cook, we had to do it in segments. I hope that worked out. I really liked the fact I saw people commenting overnight, was ans answering questions overnight. That was awesome. I saw some of you even shared that you were looking at the uh, the uh, Flame Boss, you know, where you could actually monitor the, the progress overnight. I'm just shocked that you guys were interested enough to watch that. So thank you very much. Appreciate all the comments. Uh, we can take questions today as well. I think since we're not actually doing a live demo, it's pretty much everything's done. We're gonna talk about what we, kind of wrap up what we did. So if you have any kind of questions about uh, the setup, us, the dog, we've got the golden retriever, who knows the bean recipe, uh, anything you wanna throw out there, feel free to do so, and we, we should have time to answer them today, so. Smiley uh, is on and wanting to know if you're pulling the butt off. Uh, actually, Smiley, the, the butt is already off, so it gives us an opportunity to show the cooler trick, which on certain Smiley knows, knows that trick. Um, so backtracking, backtracking, if you watch the first episode, we at one o'clock yesterday, we set up the egg and showed exactly how you set it up for a long cook uh, and some of the ingredients that were in the, in the process. Then we came on at five o'clock, we lit the egg and we uh, rubbed the pork shoulder and put everything in place. I explained the Flame Boss control monitor. You don't have to use that, but I sleep better. And then it gave us the opportunity for everybody to uh, kind of watch that overnight. And you can still do that after the fact. Um, so the pork shoulder went on, I believe it was at 5.30 last night. So it actually, I was actually shocked this morning when I got up at seven o'clock, I had a reading of, I think it was, I made notes in the, in the flame boss, I think it was 198 degrees at seven o'clock this morning. So uh, we could have just about had pork shoulder for breakfast. Uh, and that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes when you cook pork. They're never two the same. I've cooked three at a time and had one all the same size and have one that comes out two hours apart. So you just never know what you're gonna get. This one cooked fast. Uh, normally it's around that two hours a pound, but I think we ended up about an hour and a half a pound. So it officially came off. I believe it was about 11 o'clock when I got up to 201 degrees and I pulled the pork off. So this gives us a chance to show you a really cool trick uh, when that happens, because in my opinion, you're better off to end up early on a long cook like this than you are, you know, everybody in the house. We do this from time to time. We'll have a, a, a whole family, nieces, nephews, all the kids running around. And when, they, when they're hungry, they let you know it. So there's nothing worse with a, you cannot speed the process up. It's almost impossible to do. So if you've got two hours left on a pork shoulder and everybody's here, you're gonna have kids running around saying, Uncle Kenny, why can't we eat? I'm hungry, I'm hungry. So if it's done ahead of time, pretty easy trick. So we'll show the process. Uh, we're just gonna pull the pork is really the only step that's left. I'm gonna cover those beans. I'll process on the beans real quick while I've got them out. These went on. Uh, we showed you uh, they were on at the same time the pork was last night. And then at, I let them go until about 10 o'clock, I think it was last night when I pulled them off. And then I put them in the fridge before I went to bed. And then this morning, 
after I wrapped the shoulder in the pink butcher paper, uh, which you can see, I think I posted a picture of that. I put the butcher paper pork on the top shelf, the beans on the bottom, warm the beans back up and let some of that grease from the pork drip into it. So you get kind of that meat flavor on the inside. So the grease drops through the butcher paper? Yes, but so butcher paper is not like foil. Um, it keeps a lot of the moisture in, but if you've got uh, if you've got any kind of grease or anything in there, it's still gonna actually go through the, the butcher paper. So it keeps, it protects your bark so that you don't get it so black on the outside and overdo it on that. So what we did at 11 o'clock, and this trick will work for up to five hours, believe it or not. I have done it before. It will still burn your hands five hours after. So I've got a cooler. You can use any cooler and it takes several towels. So there's a towel on the bottom. So at 11 o'clock, what I did is I took the pork shoulder off. I wrapped it, I double wrapped it in aluminum foil, put a towel in the bottom of this cooler and then place it in there, kind of, it's not a big enough cooler to actually wrap, uh, but normally I would actually wrap it with a towel after you do the foil, then put it in there and then put another towel on top. So it takes three towels. You might check and make sure you're using the right towel <laughs> for this project, because it does, occasionally a little bit of it will drip onto that bottom towel for sure. Okay, I wish if you were here you could feel this, it will actually burn your hand, it's still hot and it's been a little over two hours. We better check the potatoes. That's probably ready to come off, you think? Definitely. So this was put on earlier. I'm gonna disconnect the flame boss. Nobody's watching that now. And I can probably just I'm burn my hand, I'm gonna set it right there. So this is a uh, potatoes au gratin recipe that we were going to have, uh, what was it? Mac and cheese, the uh, jalapeno mac and cheese was originally our plan. We didn't have any jalapenos. So uh, we scrapped that idea and Sean to put together this scallop potato as a side. Uh, Cause there's no sense in running to the store just for, just for jalapenos. So you can see this is, uh, this is just out here. Uh, that's the other half. This is the Dutch oven, the oval Dutch oven from Big Green Egg. Uh, I wanted to show this. Normally we cook like short ribs, chili, all kinds of stuff in the bottom. But even the top is big enough that you can use it. It's just the two of us. So if we actually cook it in that, it's real easy cleanup. Okay, we're done with the egg. Okay, so while that's cooling down, so here, so this is double wrapped in foil. And you wanna be careful when you're undoing this is This is scorching hot even after two hours. I'm gonna keep one of these to cover it when we get done. Oh, it smells so good. So oh. this is, I left it in the butcher paper. So yes, you can see there that the liquid does go through there, but it protects the bark. It does keep some of the moisture in. It's great on brisket, of course, on a pork shoulder. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. And we sell it by the roll. Uh, I think at the store you can actually buy it by the yard, but I knew I was going to use it enough with this, with my habits, that I just bought a whole roll of it. Okay, so there's the fat side. I like to use these pans just for actually put it in there and leave it. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask. Today we can actually take the questions live because it's pretty much just a final step here to if you didn't see the previous videos, you can go back and rewatch those. Okay, a couple of forks. I normally use a product called Bear Claws, Meat Claws. Now the bone just fell out there, that's encouraging. You can actually, meat just pulls off there. Okay, so I'm trying to think the total time on this was about 18, 17 hours, I think, on the cook. So, Bob is watching from the golf course in Pennsylvania. Nice. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Gonna make Bob hungry here. So just take a fork. If you have the meat claws, I like to use the meat claws. I've, I've misplaced them somewhere or, or loaned them out. We take them everywhere when we do the pork. So you can just see this will just pull apart. And I usually just pull enough. We're going to make sandwiches out of this. So I would say just pull enough that you need. You can see it's still steaming hot. 
plenty of moisture. Does an amazing job. Virtual bite? Sure. Mmm. <laughs> oh. That was an eight and a half pound. If you got that bark on the outside, that's what you're that's what you're going for. I probably could have put it in paper a little bit sooner, but it uh, it tastes good. Oh, it's delicious. Let's keep it warm. Cause we're not going to eat this yet. I basically just pull that. Uh, you could put it on a plate. It was seasoned with the. Uh, we talked about this in the previous uh, Red Eye Express from Dizzy Pig. That's a coffee infused rub. And we used uh, oak in the smoker bricks with the bourbon infused and hickory chunks for the smoke. Uh, we can share the potato recipe. I've got the beans that we did as well. You gonna share the bean recipe? No, I probably won't share the bean recipe. I will tell you, it wouldn't be hard to figure out. There's, <laughs> you would probably have most of the ingredients, if not all the ingredients, in your cabinet at home. Uh, Zoe, you wanna share Come the here, recipe? Here, Zoe. Come here. Zoe is going on 12. Mm -hmm. Going on 12. So she's moving a little slower, but. <laughs> She'll get up here at some point in time. We'll let Zoe see if she wants to say. She actually has watched me several times. I think she does know. You gonna share the thing. recipe? No? <laughs> no, not today. Maybe another time. No, it might be, it has ingredients in there, like maybe something you would put on your pancakes. Um, you know, lots of sugar, barbecue sauce. I mentioned yesterday, it's, I kind of took the uh, Jack Stack, Fiorella's Jack Stack barbecue recipe and uh, just took it from there. But that time that it spends underneath, it, brisket especially, I love the flavor of brisket dripping down into the beans. Uh, just get that underneath, get that underneath in the, in the cook, probably not while it's raw. I don't think I want the raw, you know, juice, but once it gets up to 140 degrees or so, you can put it under there. So, and then put your own spin on it. That's the main thing is just experiment, put your own spin on it. Uh, so backing up, let's see, we talked about, so last night we put it on at 5.30 and somebody actually even noticed when I, I think at midnight, I don't know that I was, I think I woke up from falling asleep, uh, noticed that it was a hundred and whatever it was, it was like 178 degrees uh, at midnight. So I was thinking that's, that's tracking pretty quick. This one did cook a lot faster than some of the others. Uh, so I lowered the temp to 2.30. So just made a change on the flame boss and overnight it got down to 230 degrees. And then you may have seen, I ramped it back up this morning once I put the beans on because I wanted to warm those up. Um, so that's the, I'm trying to think there was something else on the notes that somebody, any, any questions from anybody? I don't see any questions. Okay. So we pulled, pulled the pork shoulder at this point in time. I like to make sandwiches. You can just put it on a plate if you want with some barbecue sauce. So what I would normally do, I'm not gonna make it out here, uh, but I'll do like three pieces of bread. I think somebody commented and said some of their favorite places, Crosstown Barbecue. Yeah, me too. Uh, I like it Kansas City style where I'll do a piece of bread with the pork, sh pork shoulder and my favorite barbecue sauce. Um, and then another piece of bread and some more pork and more barbecue sauce, cut that in half. And uh, that's, that's the way I like to eat it. My favorite barbecue sauce, everybody has their favorite. Uh, I like to mix these two. So going back, I think it was four or five years ago uh, at Rock and Ribs at a barbecue competition. They had, uh, we don't compete in barbecue competitions necessarily. We're just showing what you can do with a big green egg at these type of events. But they came around and said, do you want to turn in your sauce uh, for a competition? I was like, well, we didn't make it. It's just these two combined. Uh, but I said, sure, we'll turn in the sauce. And the only reason why we did, we were actually making ribs to turn in at the competition just because we were there. And this by itself, I thought might be a little bit spicy, the Vidalia onion sriracha. I thought it might be a little spicy for some. So we diluted it 50-50 with the Big Green Eggs, uh, Kansas City Sweet and Smoky, just to take some of the heat, uh, mix that together, and it tasted amazing, both on the ribs and just trying it as a sample. So when they came around and said, you wanna turn in sauce? I said, sure, let's, let's turn in what we're actually doing on the ribs. Uh, we turned it in and got first place best sauce for rockin' ribs that year. It hasn't, we've turned it in since, and it hasn't won since, so I guess, they don't like it anymore, but they, they did like it that year, and it's my favorite. I still I still use it on just about everything when it comes to sauce. Those are both available. You just buy one of each, mix it 50-50, put it in the container like that, and you're you're good to go. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Anything else we should discuss? Thanks again for all the comments. Um, and by the way, a shout out to John. I believe it was John Hale. You almost put a tear in my eye this morning when I read what you wrote. So absolutely. Um, I'm not real good at social distancing, you know, I'm a people person, so absolutely. And we get on the other side of this, can't wait to meet all of you and shake all your hands on the, you know, when we get through this. So 
we're encouraging people to stay at home, but you don't have to stay inside. Get outside and try something new. Uh, there was also, I think somebody I noticed was, was suggesting that somebody record somebody else. Uh, I would say absolutely. If you could do that, um, got some ideas already going through the head that maybe if you record what you're cooking, do your own video, uh, can't get you on Facebook Live, but yeah, maybe we could rotate some of those in. We've got a, a YouTube channel that plays in the store. And people in the store, there's a TV back in, you know, when we can actually have a bunch of people in the store again. Uh, there's a TV that's showing, like my video show up and Dave's video shows up and some from Dr. Barbecue and all kinds of stuff. Maybe there's a way to incorporate it there. We could put a collage of uh, everybody's videos. If nothing else, I'd love to see them. I'm always inspired to see what other people do. Um, I'm doing quite a bit of this, but to be honest, we're empty nesters. It's just Shauna and I and Zoe. She's pretty, she's pretty low maintenance. So we have plenty of time as long as my camera operator is willing to step outside here and film me. Uh, it's pretty easy for me to make an excuse to get out here and cook outside. And this is what we do. So do you have any other questions before we? No questions. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I can just certainly address them after the fact. And not sure what we have. We'll have some other people in the lineup on videos, I think coming up soon from their backyard. Um, stores closed today. So nobody's there, you can still go online at OutdoorHome.com and place your order. Uh, oh, that's one other thing I wanted to bring up. A lot of this stuff that I show is like big green egg items. For instance, the, uh, the hot Dutch oven. <laughs> you can feel that even through the gloves. Now, stuff like this, if it is actually big green egg branded and you go on, big green, or on OutdoorHome.com, you cannot actually place that. We're not allowed to have that sold over the internet. So you can see the pricing and then it says call for info. So if you're interested in something like that, just, just jot down the number of what it is call the store and in 30 seconds they can actually put your order in for either curbside pickup or delivery, uh, whatever's easier for you. But the if it's a big green egg item, it's not. That's just something we can't get around. Uh, but you can certainly order it, order it over the phone. Should we show uh, one last picture of all of it together? Yeah. We can actually make sure that your potatoes look good there. Yeah, we'll pull the beans up here. See so if you saw before they went on, it really thickens up all the time that's on there. I, know, I normally like to put some of the meat, so I'll pull some of that, pull some of that pork and throw that in there. So we'll make some plates out of this. There's our pork shoulder. All right, I think it's put time for lunch. Sandwich. Yeah, I think so. I'm hungry. <laughs> Thanks again so much for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock.